Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 of the Freddy Dynamite Cafe Racer build. I'm kind of excited about this one, not so much for what we're going to be doing, but because it marks a milestone. This episode will be our first episode where we start getting parts ready to actually put back onto the bike. We'll get these old tires off, get the paint off, shine them back up, put a new coat of paint on them, and get fresh rubber put on them. And these wheels will be the first parts ready to go back on the completed build. So stay tuned and let's start making some more progress. Cue the intro. The first step to getting these tires off, as far as I know, is to get the valve stem out. So we've got the little tool, I'm gonna pull it off, unscrew it from the inside the valve, and let all the air out of the tire. Now that that's out, I gotta break the bead. This tire's pretty stiff, but if I'm lucky, I'm just gonna push on the outside here and it'll go. Or not. Okay, step two. Okay, that was a lot harder than I thought, but I got the bead broken on both sides. Now we're gonna add some soapy water to help it slide over the rim. And now, we'll be able to get the tire and irons in there between the wall of the, the outside wall of the tire and the rim, and pry it to flip it over the edge. Make sure to push the other side of the bead into the deepest part of the tire. And then just work your way around. All right, we've got the first side out. Now, I'm gonna put some soap on the other side. and then try to do the same thing. And just like that, easy peasy. <laughs> oh God, it's out. Now to get the front one off too. Here we go again. Now that we've got the tires off, let's get the drive gear out of there and also this protective ring that goes around the edge. Get as much as we can off here so we can start cleaning and stripping. From what I've heard, it's a real nightmare to get these bearings out of this wheel. But let's give it a shot anyway. We have to start by removing the bearing that's on the brake side. And of course, like most bikes, there's a spacer between this bearing and the two on the other side. So it always makes it hard to get a drift in there to catch that lip. Uh, I'm going to go with the assumption that it's going to come right out no problem. Let's give it a shot. Well, as expected, <laughs> that didn't work at all. All right, well, it looks like I figured out how to get this out. Well, when I say figured out, I've just added a bunch of heat to the bearing on the other side, got the spacer to be able to move a bit, and then with a small drift, I think I can finally push it out. Ow! What is that? Ooh, smash that pretty good. Now to get the other two which normally should just pop right out. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Now the front wheel, uh, got the seal, got this ring, so the speedometer drive, tabs going up. All right, we got both the front and the back wheel completely disassembled. Now, as I'm looking at them, I'm surprised that the black is actually in remarkable shape. I'm gonna give them a clean up first. I might, have, I might be able to get away with not painting them. Okay, I've got the wheels as clean as they're going to get right now. I hit them with degreaser first, washed them with soap and water, cleaned up any imperfections that I found. And now, the hard part is the sanding. We've got to get these things back up to being nice and shiny. We're going to start with some 400 grit and work our way up and then eventually start polishing them. Let's get sanded. There we go, sanding's done. Now, back to the bathtub. Okay, so here's what we've done so far to get the wheels ready. I degreased them, I washed them, I've sanded the areas that are going to be polished starting from 400 grit all the way up to 2000 grit. And I've also sanded the black part, which at first I thought I would be able to save, but the paint isn't as good as I thought. So I'm going to, so I'm going to give them a coat of paint too. I've sanded them up to 400 grit to give it a bit of bite. Now, at this point, I could have kept going and polished the lips and the spokes and painted afterwards, but I think it might be a better idea if I tape this all off now, paint the black, and then when I pull the tape off, finish off with the polishing. So, we've got some tape. I'm going to go around the rims, tape off everything that's not supposed to be black, and then we'll give it a shot of paint. Now we've got the stand set up, wheels on them, ready to paint so I can spin them and paint them. I'm using Duplicolor High Performance Wheel Coating. We're going to do uh, three light coats and a medium coat as per the instructions. And let's find out what happens. The paint's been drying for about an hour now, it's just slightly tacky. I want to take all the masking tape off now, make sure we get a nice clean line between everything.
So far I'm super happy with the way this is coming out. I'm going to let this black paint cure for quite a few days to make sure it's rock hard. And then we'll come back to this and we're going to shine up these lips till they're a mirror shine. Next up is a front brake rotor. Originally the plan was to just get a new one. But when I saw the cost of well over $300 Canadian, I said there's no way that's happening. Well for right now anyway. I checked my disc and it's still well within specs of the minimum thickness. So I'm just going to sandblast the old paint off it, give it a new coat of paint, and just sand the disc smooth to get rid of any of the small scratches. There's really nothing deep in there. I was also going to get it turned and have it uh, brought to a machine shop, but nobody around here does that either. So I'll start with just the sanding of it, just to leave it a clean up, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. We'll go from there. Now the wheels have been cleaned, sanded, painted, and I've let them dry for geez, a couple weeks now as I was waiting for some other parts. So now we're ready to start assembling them. We're going to start by putting in new bearings, front and back, get the tires on, valve stem, polish, get these things finished and ready for the bike. So we've got our spanking brand new bearings. The two small ones go in this side, the big one on the other side. So we've got to start with two small ones. Get these open because after when you have grease on your hands, that won't happen. And we're going to start by taking some wheel bearing grease and coating the inside of where the bearing is going to go. So let's slide in there a bit better. also a bit on the other side of the bearings. Now when you put these in, we're going to hammer them in. You just don't want to hammer on the inside race, you'll damage the bearing. So you've got to find a socket with just about the same outside diameter so you're pushing on the outside of the bearing when you're drifting it in. You want to try to go down nice and straight as possible. You can kind of hear it and feel it when you hit the bottom. That is all the way seated in. Check the other side to make sure. You can see it's all the way in. Now we put the second bearing in, same way, bit of grease on there, and it sits right on top of the other one.
Perfect. Now we'll flip the tire over, wheel over. Can't forget to put in the spacer. What these do is when you tighten the bolt, instead of just squeezing on the inner race, it pushes all the way through to give you a solid connection all the way through. That goes in like this. So I'm going to put a bit of grease into the middle first. And this one goes this direction. Plops right in there. And we have our bearing for the other side, which is a bit larger than the other two. Add our grease to the inside. And to the outside of the bearing. And there we go. Well, crap. I realized that I wasn't recording, but I'm doing the front wheel now. I did the same thing. I greased the inner race, and we're starting from the side of the speedometer gear because uh, we're going to have to put in the speedometer ring and the retaining ring and the seal on this side. Then we'll flip it over, spacer, and the bearing on the other side. So already I've greased this one and I started getting it in. It's going to keep pushing it in. Okay, so we've got our speedometer drive here. Let's put a little bit of grease on that too. The little tabs face up to catch the speedometer drive. And these two side tabs fit into the side tabs into the wheel. Just like that. Then there's this little metal retaining ring here. The inside is a little bit lower and it should fit into that little indent there. Finally we've got our seal. Make sure there's some grease all over it there, especially the groove in the back. And that'll push right in. that. There we go. I'll flip it over, do the other side. We've got to remember to put our spacer in with the uh, flange part down towards our new bearing. A little bit of grease in here. Back on our bearing surface too. Drop you in there. This bearing right in here. Again, you can hear the sound when it's all the way in. And there you go, wheel bearings are done. Now that we got the wheel bearings in, the next step I'm going to do is put the tires on. I haven't finished polishing the rims and putting the other accessories on because I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a mess getting these tires on. I'm not very good at it. So I figure if I make any damage, I can clean it up before I polish them. First step is putting on the valve stems. Now be careful if you guys are building one of these. It took me three weeks to finally get valve stems for this thing. I originally bought just little standard black ones here. But the rim is very thick here, you have to get long ones. And I couldn't find them anywhere. Finally I found a set of longer ones. Uh, they were silver and I wanted black so I just painted them black. Best I could do. So all we do is put them in.
and hopefully they won't leak. So I got my new tires. They're Shinko 712s. Uh, the things you have to be careful of when you're mounting them is that tires are usually directional and on the tread you will see an arrow pointing in the direction of rotation. This arrow is pointing that way. The wheel is going to rotate this way. So that's the right way. The second thing you have to check for is that there'll be a dot somewhere. Right there. The dot marks the lightest part of the tire. As far as I can tell, there's so many conflicting things on the internet. And in the end, once you get these balanced, I don't really think that it makes that much difference. But let's just say it does. The lightest part is going to go where the heaviest part of the wheel should be, which should be where the valve stem is. So that to this side and the rotation correct. What I use is some Windex. I say that like I've done this a thousand times, but Windex will lubricate it. And the good thing is it doesn't leave a film when it dries, so there won't be any slippage afterwards. But put some on two and theoretically when you watch everybody else on YouTube, they just go plop and it pops right on. <laughs> what I have learned is that the trick is to make sure that the bead, for example, this side we'll put the back side on, has to stay in the groove of the wheel. That gives you a bit more play to push up to the top. Pushing it up inside as much as I can, just the inside parts. And of course, that's as far as I can get. So I got these spoons. Stick the spoon under the lip and pull the tire. Onto it. Nicely sand lips. Do little chunks, not too much at a time. I could just try to do there, just a few inches at a time. All right, so we got the first part in. Now make sure, double check, we got our rotation correct. Rotation, and our dots in the right plot. A bit off here now, there we go. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the bottom in. There, just hold it in. Okay, we've got to squeeze this part together to keep it in the groove. Well, the groove is quite small, so it's a little tough. One side to the other.
wasn't too bad at all. All right, now same thing for the back. Now that the tires are on, and I don't have to worry about scratching up the lips putting them on, I'm going to polish the lips and the spokes. Originally I was going to use uh, some different compounds to do it, but since I sanded, sanded up to, I think it was 2000 grit, I'm just going to use, uh, this is a Blue Magic Metal Polish Cream, and a little cotton buffing wheel, and give it a good shine. I'm going to put a bit of tape just on the black parts around here to avoid getting too much onto there. And I made a little template here to just stick under the rubber to avoid getting all this stuff onto the wheel too. Let's give this a shot. All right, so what we're gonna do, we'll take a bit of the compound, the rag, and put on an area of the wheel that we're gonna polish, and then just Run the buffer wheel over until they come up to a mirror shine. Just do that three more times. Moment of truth. Let's see if we can get some air in these things. See if the bead will seat. Just going to bounce it a couple times to try to get the bead seated in well. No hissing. No hissing. Well, it seems to have worked. All right, so bearings in, tires on, wheels polished, painted, everything's done. The only thing left to do is to mount the stuff back on, mount the disc brake back on this, and the guard on the other one, and this, then this episode will be done. Okay, we're going to start by putting the brake rotor back on, goes here on the front wheel of course, on the side of the speedometer housing, we just rest it on there. A special shout out to my buddy, who I'm going to call Bazooka Mike for taking all my bolts and plating them. We're gonna do an episode another day on how we do that and plate some bolts and maybe get a setup over here to do the same. But so far, he's taken all the bolts for, for my wheels, plated them, they come out looking like new. So we've got the locking tabs. They go on first. Oh, I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on these two. There doesn't seem to be very much consensus if there should be blue Loctite at all or not, but I figure why not. And let's use the right bolts, not the rear bolts. Mental note, go buy some more Loctite. And we'll put them in Finger tight till they're all in, then we'll start torquing them. We'll do a crisscross pattern just to be safe. A 12 millimeter. I'm going to torque these down. According to the Ains manual, it says 14 foot pounds, which is a 168 inch pounds. 
Now we just have to bend up the locking tabs to lock these bolts in place so they don't go anywhere. Woo! Back on! And the very last thing to put on is the plastic cover on the other side. I took this, washed it, put plastic restore on it, came out like new. There we go, front wheel is done. Next up, let's put the spline flange back on, the rear wheel. According to the book, 77 foot-pounds. Whew, seems a little excessive for those bolts. I'm going to double check it, but anyway, 77 foot pounds. Last thing to do, no, back on the side, is the cover for here. All right, <laughs> back. All nice and clean and sandblasted and painted. There we go. Finished. These stickers off. friends wraps up this episode of the Freddy Dynamite Cafe Racer build. This one was a, a bit of a surprise. I thought this was going to be a easy one weeker to do but this project uh, taught me some patience. There was a lot of waiting around for parts especially those valve stems. I still can't get over that. A lot of time sanding and cleaning and painting but in the end it's all worth it. These parts look beautiful. These look brand new. They're going to look great on the bike and I'm so excited to finally have the first parts of the bike that are complete and ready to go back on. Well, go back on is a loose term since there's nothing for them to go on, but you have to start somewhere. So it's the first part. Again, this very special thanks to my good buddy, uh, what did I call him? Bazooka Mike for doing all the plating of the bolts and helping me out with this project a lot. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next episode. Like and subscribe.